Sorry, I'm just staying. I usually sit for academic presentations, and this is not one of them. Uh, uh, answer, what is it going to take for the Obama administration to accede to the Mine Ban Treaty? I hope the answer is not Norris Kids. Can Norris Kids from Morgantown, West Virginia, stand up? Can you guys stand up? <laughs> Motivating force to ban landmines in West Virginia. I hope you're not the answer. I'd like to propose an answer, but if we don't do it, you guys need to do it, because we're screwing it up for you guys. You guys have a seat. 20 years ago, I gave my first speech on landmines in 1994 at the first Senate hearing on landmines called the Global Humanitarian Mine Crisis. It was in front of the Senate Subcommittee for Foreign Operations. I didn't know anything about landmines. I received a fax, a fax, from Jody Williams introducing me to the issue after my accident in Somalia, which resulted in the loss of both of my legs. I was honored to do so because I thought it was a unique story. Unfortunately, it's not a unique story. Tens of thousands are being injured and maimed and killed every year around the world. Now 4,000 a year are killed, and that's one too many. So here we are 20 years ago, 20 years later, in Washington, D.C., and I'm getting bored of the same speeches. I'm getting bored of why our government is continually, as Jody said, to be frustrating, confusing, and mind-boggling. And as His Royal Highness just said, it's a no-brainer to sign on to this treaty. So my brief two minutes left, I say, why can't the Obama administration sign? This is the 20th anniversary of the world's first global humanitarian mine program within the U.S. government. The U.S. government has given more than $2 billion over the last 20 years to help alleviate the negative effects of landmines and other UXO. Last year, it gave $149 million in 35 countries, more than any other country combined, more if you add up the next 10 and combine it. That is a wonderful Madison Avenue PR story, yet they're not here in the room to argue for that. And my question is why, and I hope to give you the answer at the end in a minute and a half. 22 years ago, Senator Leahy, as you heard, uh, introduced legislation for the first ever in the world's history for an export, on anti export ban on anti-personnel landmines. 21 years ago, in the State Department, in the United States, in Washington, D.C., was the first ever comprehensive study on landmines and the humanitarian devastating effects of anti-personnel landmines called hidden killers. 20 years ago this year, President Clinton was the world's first leader to call, and I quote, for the eventual elimination of anti-personnel landmines. 18 years ago, uh, the United States led a global effort to ban anti-personnel mines. 15 years ago, President Clinton said one of his biggest disappointments as president in his administration was not signing the Mine Ban Treaty. I'm not going to go over the last 15 years. You already know the story. The United States was the first ever country to ban the export, first ever country to produce. Why are we here 20 years later discussing whether the United States should join or not, especially when the U.S. is doing so much to try to alleviate the negative effects? Among several issues, which General Guard, I'm sure, will talk about, and Steve Goose, two sticking issues are special forces and SEALs, and the second is the Korean forces under U.S. command in time of war in Korea. Both of those distinguished individuals will address those arguments. However, I point to His Royal Highness, Prince Mered, and his beautiful, wonderful kingdom of Jordan. They are surrounded by not-so-peaceful states, let's say. They are a major contributor to the United Nations peacekeeping operations. They have very well-respected special forces, including King Abdullah. Yet, they overcame their own arguments and showed the courage to sign and ban anti-personnel landmines. And if the Kingdom of Jordan can do it, why can't we? In my opinion, there's been enough information and options presented to President Obama. So here's my elevator speech, bottom line answer to my question, which I posed at the beginning of my short presentation. President Obama simply needs the political courage to say, yes, we can, as he did six years ago. 
and to accede to the mind ban treaty in a positive way. We're asking him to beat a change, but the United States has been a change in a number of issues in anti-personnel minds. I asked President Obama, if not who, if not you, who? If you're not going to take Leo's leadership to accede to the treaty, then who? Is it the students from Morgantown? Probably. I hope not. I would ask President Obama to send a, an official representative to Maputo in 2014 in June and announce that he's going to support the acceding of the United States to the Mine Ban Treaty. Because after all, it's a very easy question that should not be frustrating, confusing, mind-boggling, and it's a no-brainer. Thank you. Mm -hmm.